the number you have reached, 911, has been changed to a non-published number. You're listening to UCW Radio. In your face. Welcome to another segment of the UCW Radio Show. And this is your host, Lou, a.k.a. Falcon Coparis. And I want to thank all of our listeners as I do each show for uh, tuning in and listening to the show. Without you, uh, we wouldn't have a show. And we have a lot of great things going on. Uh, with the show, we're making a lot of additions, having a lot of great guests. I'm, I'm so excited about that. Uh, every time we have a new guest on the show, uh, it just gives me more fuel uh, you know, to keep uh, pushing on and getting things together. So, uh, yeah, it's fantastic um, uh, hosting the show. And I'm, I hope that all our listeners are continuing to um, enjoy it as well. Now, in just a little while, we're going to have, and th- in my opinion... Probably one of the strongest women in the world. Uh, she's a competitive bodybuilder, a competitive powerlifter. Not not only let me let me fix this a little bit. She's not only a competitor, but she's also a champion. She's accomplished so much in, in that arena, bodybuilding, powerlifting, that type of thing. Um, and guess what, people? She started it all later in life. So guess what? Your excuses are your own. Now, before we bring her on the line, I want to go over a few things that that I need to actually go over before we bring on our guest. Uh, look, a couple of weeks ago, we an announcement came out, a press release came out uh, about the Ultimate Body uh, Radio Show. We are hosting it. That is con- directly connected to the Ultimate Body TV Show, and it's a it's a great project actually. And I sh- I want to um. I want to actually go over it a little bit so that you can uh, get a better idea of what um, of what it's about. Because as I said, it's a really uh, interesting concept. It's the first of its kind, actually. You know, you see uh, reality shows like The Biggest Loser and things of that nature. Um, on VH1, you have The Rock Love, and you have this and that, and so on and so forth. And this right here, I believe, uh, is going to be the next one but in such a positive way that this is going to have longevity like you have American Idol has been on for like ever but has made a lot of top stars uh, where you have like uh, reality shows like like Big Brother but you know what that Big Brother it, it produces controversy it doesn't produce anything uh, further than that uh, at least with the ultimate body reality show uh, it actually will produce some positive results. So I think people are going to adhere to it a lot more. Now, it's being brought, brought to you by the great producer, David Lyons. Uh, he has an amazing story. Uh, he He's a producer of, uh, executive producer of Hog Heaven and the feature, uh, animated feature Creepers. And you have producer Lauren Alvarez. Now, she uh, created or was producer of such reality shows that you may be familiar with as Meet My Folks, The Surreal Life, uh, The Osbournes, and so on and so forth. So, yeah, you have uh, good people behind this, without a doubt. And also, to add on to that, uh, you have a great, um, you have a great cast of uh, judges, and you have a great, um, I guess, host of the show. Okay, which is uh, Bob Chicharillo. He is the voice of the Miss Olympia. So it's pretty interesting. You have uh, uh, bodybuilding, IFBB Hall of Famer, bodybuilding Hall, Hall of Famer, Rich Gasparri, uh, Natural Mr. Universe, uh, Doug Burns. We had him on the UCW radio show not too long ago. You have the IFBB Bikini Pro. Marcia Prince, great person. We had her on the show. We had such a blast when we had her on. So uh, things are getting uh, really interesting with the show and the concept. You have 13 men, 13 women. Uh, They're being put through the most vigorous physical training and dieting that they probably have ever had in their lives. You win the show. Well, guess what? You win the competition. You get 50 grand each, a man and a woman. And there are, there are a lot of things involved there as, uh, you know, uh, you have Gasparri Nutrition, which is behind it. You have Anytime Fitness, which is behind it. So, uh, and they, they all stay in a, in, a, uh, in a mansion. And they go through about 12 to 13 weeks of training. And at the end of the day, you know, whoever wins the competition wins the money. 
And it doesn't matter who it is that's involved in a show. I don't care if you're eliminated the first couple of weeks. The experience and the knowledge that you're going to gain is going to be out of this world that you'll never be able, you won't even be able to pay for ever because you have top bodybuilders there. You have some of the top doctors, a top chiropractors, so on and so forth that'll be there. Okay, this is something that the pros don't even get. All right, so you have a unique opportunity. Now, the last um, audition or the, the last uh, open casting call for the Ultimate Body Show is on Saturday, October 17th from 11 to 6 p.m. at the Ramada Orlando Celebration Resort and Convention Center. And actually, if you're going there, there's a special rate for on hotels. I think it's like 60 bucks or something where you go and you stay in the hotel for a couple days while you're going to uh, audition for the show. All right, so bring your A game and get into a little bit of shape before you get there so that you can get on the show because I'm, I'm sure there are going to be hundreds if not thousands of people you know, trying to get on the show because this is a one of a kind and this is, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say it, it's going to be the creme de la creme in reality TV. Uh, now the, the Ramada Orlando Celebration uh, Resort and Convention Center is located at 635 West Earlo Bronson Highway. That's in Kissimmee, Florida. And the website, so you can get all the information you want, is the Ultimate Body TV Show dot com. Has everything on there. And I'm sure at some point in time you're gonna see my mug on there, so you'll say, Oh wow, you know, that <laughs> should be interesting. But um yeah, it's gonna be a great situation and uh, if you ever wanted to get involved in something like this, a, a true reality show that can enhance your life and maybe even give you a career on top of that, this is the one to go to. Again, the website is www.theultimatebodytvshow.com. Now, uh, I have to also give our listeners this information. You can give us a call. We want to interact with you. We want to hear from you. Give us a call and you know, lay down your, your questions or comments and just let us know. Uh, you know you, you, you actually, you can leave the questions or comments for the guests as well. So if you want to ask them a question, you can actually leave them uh, your question or comment. And if it's interesting enough, we'll make it part of the show and we'll pose it to them while we have them on the line. And you can uh, to get, get a pen, write this down. This is a number. You can give us a call at 323-952-4369. That's 323-952-4369. So, uh, yeah, reach out to us. We want to have you part of the show because... You know, we are, you know, UCW Radio Show is here for you, so get involved. And I need to also say that the UCW Radio Show has opened its doors to sponsorship partnerships. So marketers, advertisers, you know, you want to you wanna link up, you want to align with us, the door is open. And there's no better time than now. Uh, go to ucwmagazine.com to get additional information, or you can actually call us as well at 323-952-4369. That's 323-952-4369. Uh, give us a buzz and, uh, and uh, see how you can align with us. We have a lot of great things going on. Uh, the Ultimate Body Radio Show. We have a few other shows in the pipeline. So it is getting interesting. So join the UCW Radio Show and make it happen for yourself. And if you're on Twitter, you can shoot me on some questions, comments as well. Same as calling. Uh, my Twitter name is Luis Velasquez. That's L-O-U-I-S. V E L A Z Q U E Z. Follow me and tweet away. Now, without further ado, let me patch in, and as I said earlier, let me patch in the woman. I think that she is probably the strongest woman in the world. Uh, let me patch her in. Competitive bodybuilder, powerlifter, champion amongst champions. Here is Kate Baird. <laughs> Kate, it's great to have you on the UCW radio show. Uh, I, I want to thank you right now for taking time during your travels. You know, you're you're spinning around, you're bouncing all over the place, but you took some time out for us today, and I appreciate it. Oh, it's my pleasure, Lou. Excellent. Thanks uh, for having me. Ah, well, you're 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 welcome here. You know that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but, but we always appreciate the time that our guests uh, take out for us, and they make for the show. Because uh, we try to, uh, you know, we need time to do it. You know, it's not like a, a two-minute uh, conversation. And our, you know, our listeners uh, really uh, appreciate the stories that come forth. Now, Kate, sure. yeah, you, you look, you have a pretty amazing story. 
I think. Actually, no, I don't think I know. So for our <laughs> listeners, <laughs> what I'm going to do uh, for our listeners that aren't familiar with uh, the whole story, I want to give some broad strokes on it. Uh, you are, first and foremost, a uh, champion powerlifter. Uh, you're a bodybuilder. I am. Um, I hold eight world records currently, and uh, I'm striving for more. Well, you, so, you, you're going to create <laughs> a lot of good so stuff. Eight so far. Yeah. Eight so far. <laughs> and building, and building. But look, you're a bodybuilder. You are the Delaware, the Delaware State Chairperson for the American Powerlifting Association. On top yes, of all yes. of that, on top of all of that, you're a mommy. You're a mommy. I am. <laughs> I am a mom. Yes. I have, I have one son. Uh, he's 16 years old. He's in the, those magical teenage years, but he's actually a very good kid. Yeah, how much stress so is he that? Doesn't give much problem. <laughs> yeah, hey, it doesn't matter. Teenagers, you have stress associated with it, so thank God you have a gym. <laughs> yes, he, he's about to buy his first vehicle, so that's very stressful. <laughs> yeah, well, you know what? It'll increase your vascular, your, your vascular, uh, there you go. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I can't even spit out the word. Oh, I, I, look, I, I had a retarded moment right there. Oh, my God. Um, but but what, what I like to do, um, if you don't mind, is, is kind of start at the beginning because you do have an amazing uh, story of your, your journey. And uh, as opposed to me having retarded moments, I want to I want our listeners to <laughs> really um, embrace your story because, you know, I, 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 I want to highlight it. I, I think it's pretty cool. Uh, so can you tell us where where, where, did, where did it all start? How did you get involved in, in powerlifting? Uh, well, powerlifting actually came after the bodybuilding. So um, I'll go back, and this is be telling my age, but um, when I was about 10 or 11 years old, I was watching Wide World of Sports with my father on a Sunday afternoon. And... Uh, it's telling he both our ages, by the way, because I remember that. But go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> but he, he was watching Wide World of Sports, and they were televising the Mr. Universe contest. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was Arnold and Franco Colombo and Lou Ferrigno and all those guys. And, you know, I just uh, fell in love with it there. And even though girls or women didn't do it at that time, at least not openly, mm -hmm. I knew right then and there that someday I wanted to do that. I wanted to be a bodybuilder. I just was in awe. So, um, you know, I, I grew up in a, when I was um, in my early 20s, I wanted to get into it, and I didn't know how. You know, I didn't know anybody who, who worked out, really. I didn't hang around with anybody who was into sports. I was never into sports either. But I started dating a guy who was into bodybuilding, compete, but he, he did go to the gym and, and work out. And we started dating, and he used to take me to his friend's house who had a basement with the old plastic weights, you know. The, the, the gold the, ones, um, right? <laughs> yeah, the ones you got at Sears. <laughs> no, the silver ones, and, yeah. Oh, yeah, I, I remember those. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Ted Williams, yes, that's Ted Williams. Um, the ones that were filled with concrete and sand. So oh. that's actually where I, I learned many of the basics mm -hmm. in the basement of this house. And that was back in my early 20s. And then I remember joining my first gym, which was the uh, Y, the Jewish Y on Broad Street in Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. And uh, I thought I was in heaven. <laughs> and you saw a real way in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> and it was funny because um, I think back on the kind of equipment they had, it was just, you know, the old archaic, I call Fred Flintstone dumbbells with the mm -hmm. big round ends on them that mm -hmm. uh, they used to use in the very, very olden days. Um, very old equipment, but I thought I was in heaven. And I used to work out, and I had these dreams of being a bodybuilder someday. Um, I worked out, you know, for a few years, and unfortunately it didn't work out that way in the beginning, and then life happens. I mm -hmm. got married, got a career. I was a realtor for um, about 15 years, up until last year, actually. Um but, but let me let me yeah. ask you this, and I'm going to just cut you off for a second because I want to. I'm gonna, we're going to take pit stops on your journey because I want to really elaborate on the situation. So when you sure. you were out there dating a guy that was involved in working out, uh, so you you, mm -hmm. you you started getting into weightlifting and everything. You went to the, you went to uh, working out in somebody's basement to going to the gym, and it was like a, it was a different world to you for you, and then you from there. You know, 
uh, obviously, as, as you said, life happens. You know, you, you got married yeah. and things happen, you know, and you had, you had a lot of things go on in your life. Um, but it wasn't, you know, you weren't competing in bodybuilding at the time. You weren't, you, you just had a desire when you were younger, uh, started working out. And then, you know, again, life interferes and sometimes you have those blockades. But in the back of your mind, you still had this fascination with uh, bodybuilding and uh, just weightlifting. Yes. Yes, that never went away. Mm-hmm. Never went away. In fact, I still had uh, I had dumbbells and a set of those plastic weights in my own backyard that I that's where I worked out for many years was in my backyard. My neighbors would think I was nuts when I'd put the barbell across my shoulders and walk back and forth up, down around the lawn. But uh, you know, it wasn't anything major like I do now. You know, I just kept in shape basically and thought about doing it again someday. Mm-hmm. And um, one day the time came. I got back into the gym, which was about six years ago, about this time of year ago, 2003. Um, my son was old enough to be able to leave at home for short periods of time and uh, just thought it was time to get back in the gym. So I did, and I got the iron in my hands and got the fire lit all over again, bit by the bug, as they say. Okay. So I started working out, and I always went to the gym. And worked out very, very intensely, I guess is the word. And people always asked me if I was competing. And, you know, I thought about it, and I knew that the Delaware State was going to be coming up in in June. Mm-hmm. So I had about nine months to actually train for that. And, and I and trained under my own. And that's a guide. Delaware, that's a Delaware State think. Bodybuilding Championships, right? Yes. Okay. That was in 2004, yes. Okay. So I decided, sure, I'm going to do it. I always wanted to, and I want to do it uh, without having gone through my life looking back and saying I didn't do it. Mm-hmm. You know, I never, I, I don't think I really expected anything to come of it. I just thought I'd get up there, do it, and then, you know, go on with my merry life. But I actually won that show. So mm-hmm. that got the snowball rolling. Oh, that, I won that, the 2004 that, Delaware State overall. That pumped you up. Yeah, it sure did. <laughs> Literally and figuratively. It sure did. <laughs> and then, um, so of course I wanted to do another one. Mm-hmm. So I decided I'd do one for the next summer. And actually I met a guy who I actually dated for a few years, maybe three years. But I met him at the gym, and he noticed my strength potential. He's mm-hmm. a world-class power lift. He noticed my strength potential. Mm-hmm. And um, one day I was doing an exercise dumbbell rows with, I don't know how much weight I was using, but I was doing it. And he was watching me and he said, you could probably use a 100-pound dumbbell. I think I had a 70. Mm-hmm. I said, no, I can't. I, I can't use that much. He said, yes, you can. He went over, got it, plopped it at my feet and could go ahead. So of course, I had to do it and I did it. So, you know, he decided he was going to take me under his wing and train with me and he actually said he was training me for uh, powerlifting me, basically for me to gain size, uh-huh. um, keep the size for the bodybuilding. But, you know, looking back, that was not his intention at all. His intention was because he knew I would be a good powerlifter. Right. But you, so you, 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 my first powerlifting me in but, but Let me interrupt you one more of, time, Kate. I'm sorry. I just need, I just want to ask you a question. Now, you were... You were actually, uh, what were you doing with the 70s? You were doing shoulder presses or were you doing bench presses? Um, bent over dumbbell rows for your okay, back. It's okay. a back exercise. Yeah, you yeah. lean over and you just pull it up to your back. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, but you went from 70 to 100, which is a big jump. So, um, but that, uh, if, well, if you can do <laughs> I it. I won't tell you how much I use now. <laughs> if, you, if you use more but, than uh, me, then, then you and I, uh, that's another conversation for another day. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's let's talk about your your competing. Go go ahead. I'll, I'll let you continue to talk. Yeah. So so in preparation for my next bodybuilding show, which was the following summer, I actually did a powerlifting meet, mm-hmm. and I fell in love with it instantly. And it's a completely different sport. Um, a lot of people who don't know think of both those sports as being pretty much the same, but they're not. And you probably know that mm-hmm. bodybuilding is. Um, you use the weights as a tool mm-hmm. to sculpt your body, and mm-hmm. then uh, powerlifting, you use your body as the tool mm-hmm. to move heavy weights. So um, I fell in love with that instantly. But 
it wasn't like I wanted to give up bodybuilding either. So I'm one of the few crazy people in this world who actually do both at the same time, which is actually very, very hard and pretty stupid, actually, if you think about it, but I can't help myself. <laughs> well, you, you enjoy doing it. I want it all. I have to have it all. <laughs> that's a, you have one life to live. You, you have to do the things that make you Absolutely. happy. And, yeah, so, so our Absolutely. listeners understand that the reason that it is difficult to do both is that you're dieting with your bodybuilding, your, your carb levels come down, you, you change everything around, your power lifting, so your strength level starts going up and down, which puts you in a dangerous position because you can get hurt. And, and, Absolutely. And, and that happens. And I, Absolutely. Just, I just want to clarify that for our listeners that don't understand uh, how powerlifting and bodybuilding work. Fortunately, I do because I've done it. And uh, I don't like being hurt, but I'm always hurt. So that's my problem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm always walking around, hobbling around in some kind of pain, too. Yeah. That's, that's just one of the sacrifices we have to make. Yeah, the pressure on the joints, it, it happens. It happens to me anyway, so. But that's just my story. But this is all about you, so let's let's talk about you, Kate. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so anyway, I, I did pretty well in my first powerlifting meet and decided that I wanted to do more. Um, so actually, that's, you know, I don't know if I want to jump the gun on this, but kind of how I became the APA chairperson in the state of Delaware is when we first started, um, backtrack. Well, yeah, let's back the ATF a little bit. is one of the sanctions. They were looking for a chairperson for the state of Delaware, and my ex had suggested that I be that person. Mm-hmm. And, and this I, is when you, know, were, this is when you were involved about powerlifting. But this is when you huh? were involved in competitive powerlifting at the time when this happened. Yeah, it was after the first meet. Okay. And uh, I said, "Why don't you be the chairperson? That way, we can have a meet. We had a friend who has a gym." Mm-hmm. And actually, that's still where I, I run a couple of meets a year, and I still have them there. But I said, why don't you be the chairperson, and that way we can have meets where I don't have to travel for and I can compete in them. Right. There you go. <laughs> so it's all purely selfish reason. But um, we had since split up, and I became the APA chairperson. I held on to those meets. I run those meets still, but not now under APA sanction. Okay. So, so you actually you bounced from, and this was what in uh, 2005 or 2006? Uh, 2006 was when we held our first meet, and I still run two meets every year. Okay, and then uh, you you're now the uh, American Powerlifting uh, Association and the state of Delaware, you're the chairperson, which right. to me is is pretty cool because now you you're the power that be. <laughs> in Delaware, as far as power. Yeah, yeah, I am, but it, it's it's fun. I mean, I love. Um, I ha- continue to run the meets not only because I love it. Um, I love going to me. It's just like a big, big party, run a big party. Uh, but I love seeing other it. people involved in it. I love seeing other people um, challenge themselves and get mm-hmm. get excited about it. Uh, when when you see people in their first meets and they just get so excited that oh my god, look what I just did, you know, and they jump up and down and get happy. And, mm-hmm. so, well, I think cool. that, I think that's great because you actually, um, you know, you, you're you're doing something that you love to do, you know. But I, I you know, I want to really paint this picture with you is that, you know, this is not something that you were doing when you, when you were 10, 20, or 30. You know, this is something that you started doing a little bit later in life, and but you had a, you had a vision when you were younger, and most people, yes. yeah, most people with anything in life, I don't care, bodybuilding, business, whatever it is, some people are afraid to reach out for their dreams, and, and, and the reality is, is that you you know, obviously there was a catalyst that somebody brought it to your attention, but you had it in you. You said, you know what? Yeah, maybe. Maybe I can do that. And you, you didn't let anything interfere once you had it in your mind that, you know, now it's time for you to do this. Right. Right. You, right. You, you, think, yeah. you went and you reached for the gold and you went out there and you got things done. And that, that's the picture that I want to paint to our listeners so that, that they can embrace this because this wasn't, you wasn't like you were training in bodybuilding and powerlifting since you're 18 years old. Right. You know, now, and I'll say this out loud, mm-hmm. I don't want to, but I will. I am 48 years old. Most people think I'm younger, which is fine with me, but um, I just competed this past 
July in the bodybuilding, the NPC Masters in the over 45. So, you know, um, I guess I'm getting over that age thing. But, no, it, you know, I, I hate hearing people use that as an excuse. Oh, I'm 40 now, and I just can't do those things anymore. Well, hell, I didn't start until I was technically, what, 42, 43 years old. Right. So I don't hear it. Good, but you know what? That's, I'm glad you said that because uh, excuses are easy. That's the easy thing. Make an excuse. Oh, I'm too this. I'm too old. I'm I'm too. I have too many kids. I'm too busy. I'm too this. I have a, you know, rough job. This and that. You know, if you want to get something done, you're gonna do it. You're gonna find a way to do it. And you have. If you really want to do it. Yep. You will find a way to do it. Exactly. And you and you have. And I mean, in in your forties. And just 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 to even say this, you know, what was it? Jay Jay Z said it in, in, in a song. That 30 is a new 20, 40 is a new 30, so on and so forth. So, you know, so let's say you you probably you look like you're in your mid 30s, and that Thank is you. you're welcome. But it's true, it's true. And you know, and the thing is, is that you know this is the lifestyle that you have. You know, you have the body, you know, the bodybuilding slash powerlifting lifestyle, but it's how you live your life. It's not just uh, for you. It's not just all right. I'm going to do this sport and that's it. It's a lifestyle. It's unlike it baseball. Yeah, it's unlike all, baseball. All encompassing, twenty-four-seven. Right, right. <laughs> and it's it's the way you forge your life and your and how things happen around you that allow you, you know, to to keep, um, I guess, keep the, the the youthful appearance. But also, it's not only an appearance, it's, but it's how you feel inside too. Yes, you know, if it didn't make me feel good, I wouldn't do that. And I think the key thing for you. And this is this is serious that your son's sixteen, and you know something he knows that mama's can whoop his butt. <laughs> no, he's got me wrapped around his finger, and he knows it. <laughs> <laughs> and he's, he's listening. And he uses that too. <laughs> oh, there, there you go. Now, you, now he's listening to this. He's like, ah, ah. But you you recovered from some from some stuff, you know, because you, when you were training in your backyard, you were doing that with your weights, you know. Uh, and I just want to get into this a little bit. Because we gave, you know, like a, a rapid uh, fast forward through everything. People see where you are now and what, you know, where, where you know, you're the, uh, the APA uh, chairperson in uh, Delaware and whatnot. But you had a rough road. You had a rough road because you went, you were training in your backyard. You were, you were doing real estate. Uh, you know, you wanted to actually, you know, get, just keep yourself in shape. You know, you had your son and everything, and you were training in your backyard because you really couldn't go to the gym because you couldn't afford a babysitter at the time. No. Right, and, and then, and no. then you, but you, you made it a point to do what you needed to do to keep yourself in shape. Yeah, I mean, anybody can, you know, they, again, they make excuses. Um, I can't because uh, I, I have a children or whatnot. Well, he would take a nap, and I'd go out in the backyard and, pick up the weights and fool around for you know half hour or so. So but then that that there are, there are no excuses. <laughs> that, that, that's a key. That's a, that, well, that, that's a big thing because you know and and also uh what was it in um in, in 2000 or 2001 you slipped a disc in your back. I did and that had nothing to do with weight training either. I was actually standing up getting out of a recliner chair. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, what provoked that, um, I pretty much blamed that on the way I used to sleep on my stomach and the way I used to, you know, have my body position was kind of awkward. Mm -hmm. um, but I guess, you know, re repetitive motions and whatnot are really what throws your back out sometimes. Right. Um, and I just turned a certain way. I was getting up out of the chair and it went out and I was crooked. I was I was really crooked. I went to a chiropractor, and he almost didn't want to work on me because it was so bad. Wow! But I said, please, <laughs> please, Help I don't me. want to go to the doctor. Help me, please. So it actually took a couple of years to uh, about two years to actually get to the point where it felt better that I might be able to you know, work out again. And again, at that time, my son was a little bit older, and I could go to the gym. So I said, mm -hmm. this is it. And then you started to get back in, but you know, but but this was this against doctor's orders at the time, or I actually did not see a doctor for it. I went to uh, actually two different chiropractors, mm -hmm. and you know my back is pretty good now. Mm -hmm. 
you know, I, I can't say it's perfect. It will never be perfect again. Mm-hmm. I do go to the chiropractor. Well, actually, I'm going to the chiropractor now for one of my knees, which is kind of funky. It wants to uh, laterally instead of vertically, but that's getting better too. But, you know, if I don't go to the chiropractor at least once a month, my mm-hmm. back will start to feel like it needs to go back to the chiropractor. Well, you know, a chiropractor... It will never be right. Yeah, but a chiropractor serves its purpose. You know, you have... If, a lot of times, if you go... If you hurt your back and have a slip disc or something, you go to a doctor. You know, this is not knocking any medical doctors. I don't want to make this clear. Uh, but I I do think that a chiropractor does have its place because, you know, if you go to a medical doctor, you do something in your back, the first thing is, okay, well, uh, surgery or something in the nature of drugs or whatever it is, you know, because that's what they know. But with chiropractic stuff, they're they're aligning your body and, and kind of straining up your spine the way it should be. And keeping you balanced. Yeah, and right now I'm very, very blessed to have a very good chiropractor. He's got a lot of degrees in sports therapy, mm-hmm. and by God, I you know, I he's one step down from God to me. Oh, <laughs> he's really <Lord>. good. <laughs> well, you know what? Then he has to be good. He has to be good at what he does. You know, uh, so kudos to him. Yeah. And you know what? He when he when he listens to this show, you know what he's gonna say. He's gonna say, "All right, that's all good. You, you you said that about me, Kate, but uh, you know, nobody know, no one knows who I am." <laughs> Doctor Reese. There, there you go. See, I, that's okay. You, you can give him a plug. Give him his props because he's keeping you in order. You know, you you know, you went again. You know, uh, you know, 2001. Your back is out. You're walking around crooked. You know, and you just made the decision. Hey, you know what? You're gonna you're gonna start going back to the gym, getting yourself in shape, and then you went you went bananas. And, uh, but this was like something that was all, this was something that was inside you for a long time. And you just had a long opportunity. time. Yeah. And, and, yeah <laughs> I and, released it. Yeah. yeah and you released, released it. It's like, and... it's like poof out and you get it out and you start doing that. And I think that that's awesome because, you know, uh, I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't a long time after you started going back to the gym that you, uh, started competing though. Yeah, it was, uh, I got back to the gym. October of 2003, I think, and I did my first competition in June of 2004. So See, that's that's crazy. nine months, eight months. <laughs> So that, but, that, um, that, but that's awesome because you went, you never, you weren't in the gym. You were not training in the gym for a long time. You were at home, and this is a key point for those that are listening to the show. You were training in your backyard, and you came back from a back injury. Most people at that point would have said, you know what? I think that I'm pretty much done. Let me go uh, play Tilly Winks with the, with the kid, and that that's what. Let people... me curl up with the ice cream and watch TV now. <laughs> yeah, let me go watch uh, the Biggest Loser and sit there and and see if I can reach that point so I can go on the show. I know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but but people do have this self pity factor, and that, that's why we love and I, I love having you know guests like yourself on the show because you know uh, the journey is amazing because uh, you know. You you went through all the stuff where you could have just not have gone down that road. You could have sat there and said, you know what, my my dream I can't attain it because my poor little back went out. And you could have did that easily. I could have, yeah. It's not in but, your nature. But you know, it was just a like a fire burning inside me, or a calling, or whatever you want to call it. Um, it it never died, and I I had to pursue it. No, then you, or, you know, I would have looked back someday and been very sad that I didn't. Yeah, but and I'm, I'm really you know, happy that I have pursued it because it's, uh, you know, it's, it's my essence. Mm-hmm. My essence. Well, this this has centered you in your life. And, and basically, it also has given you a career, you know, that you know, beyond what you normally do. Well, if you want to call it a career, I don't oh. make much money <laughs> Yeah, but well, you, I can't say I don't make any, but <laughs> yeah, but you, but you know something. At the end of the day, when 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 everything uh, is said and done, you know, you know, your son can go and say, "Yeah, this is what, this is what my mama did." You know, this is these are the things that you accomplished, and just doing that, uh, I feel, is setting an example for others to follow suit. So that's the way you pay things forward by example. And tell people. Well, I, I hope some somebody's listening to the radio show who, um, you know, has has wavered in their desires to do some of these things, and because of their jobs or their children or whatever it might be, 
injuries and just decided, you know, it will never happen, um, that they might rethink that and, and let it happen because it can. Yeah. Uh, you know, and the thing is with you, you when you when you competed in uh, 2004, that was an MPC show. And yeah. uh, when you did that, you know, didn't, didn't something happen? You got sick or something? Actually, <laughs> actually, yes. Uh, what happened was I started dieting for the show, and I went down really low carb, as most bodybuilders do, and I picked up the cardio, and I was just wearing myself out, and I got really sick. I mean, I, there came a couple of days I could hardly pick my head up off the pillow. Mm -hmm. uh, I went to the doctor, and they gave me all these tests for Lyme disease and mono and whatever it might be. Eventually, we found out what it was, and I am hypoglycemic. I have blood sugar problems. Okay. But at that point, we didn't know, and I would started dieting eight weeks. I did three weeks of diet, and I said, you know, I'm too sick for this. I'm not going to kill myself for this dream. So for two weeks, I actually went off the diet and just started acting like a normal person again. And then I had a friend who was wanting to compete in the show, and she said, I need you to help me do this. She said, you're going to do it too. She, kind of, she didn't have to twist it that hard. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but she twisted my arm back into deciding to do it again. So with three weeks to go, I started my diet again. And I really didn't think, you know, with three weeks of dieting, I'm not going to look that good. There's going to be other people there that look really good. Mm -hmm. But at least I'm going to get up on that stage right. and say, I have done it. I always wanted to do it. So, so I wound up doing it. And, and somehow I won. <laughs> well, but you had to change your whole diet around because, you know, you were, uh, I guess you were borderline uh, diabetes at the time. Borderline diabetes, but um, we've come to find out I'm hypoglycemic. So actually now, you know, when I hear people talk about carbohydrates, and, oh, and we can't do it because uh, you're eating too many. I can't do it because I'm eating too many carbohydrates. Well, if I don't eat the carbohydrates, I'm going to die. Yeah. Literally, I will die. <laughs> yeah. So my diet is a little bit different than a typical bodybuilder's when, when you run into condos prep because I eat a lot of carbohydrates. I have to. So to keep yourself balanced. Yes. I mean, it has nothing to do with bodybuilding or powerlifting. It has to do with your life because if you don't do that, uh, you won't be around, and that's not good. Right. Yeah, that's not um, good. I'm sure most people at some point uh, experience some kind of low blood sugar where you, know, you get a little shaky and you start to speak a little uh, slower and your, your thinking gets a little bit muddled. But uh, in my condition, um, it, it personifies it. it um, it gets pretty bad sometimes if I don't eat every couple of hours on a normal basis, whether I was training or not, I, I have to. And, but then you have to monitor oh, okay. yourself as well, right? Yes. Yeah, to make sure because then you, know, you can just slip into... But, you know, I'm so used to eating that way now. It, it's really no, no problem. Yeah, because we had, we had a guest on the show, and you probably know who he is. Uh, he's a natural Mr. Universe, Doug Burns. And he was, mm -hmm. uh, from the age of seven, he was a type one, uh, he had type one diabetes. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he went through all of that stuff because no, at that time, no one knew what he had. But then he went and uh, he went to the doctor and he diagnosed and thank God, because at that time, you know, if, he, if they didn't diagnose him and get him on insulin, he, he never would have made it. But then he, right. he, he goes through right. that and he becomes Mr. Universe. He, well, Mr. California, the Mr. Universe, something of that nature, but he created some great things he, you know, for himself, and he continues to do great things in his life. So when you say that you are hypoglycemic and, you know, I hear about diabetes, I hear about this stuff and all these obstacles that could be obstacles, you, you, you're, not, you're not allowing that to be an excuse. You're embracing even that and still moving forward. See, that's why I think your, your story is amazing because you, you're owning this stuff. And you're moving you forward. Find a way to work around it. If there's something that you want that bad, <laughs> you will find a way to get it. It's, it's just a passion, and um, you know I've learned how to deal with that and and other things. Well, you know, you, you go. I'm, I'm doing what I want to do in, in the bodybuilding and the powerlifting world. Well, I think so. that I think that's awesome. You know, I just want to go through uh, some of your stuff. You said you competed um, recently. And the MPC Masters, right? Bodybuilding. MPC Masters Nationals, uh, July 18th. It was in Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm. Oh, I love Pittsburgh. I, pl I placed third heavyweight. 
And then uh, your last, when did you last compete in powerlifting? Um, <laughs> again, I'm one of the crazy fools who actually do both at the same time. Right. So I actually did two powerlifting meets this past year mm -hmm. so far. I say that because I want to get back on the platform before the end of the year. But I did uh, an IPA meet on March 21st, which was about three weeks into my diet. Mm -hmm. um, I, I just bench pressed and deadlifted. And then uh, I actually bench pressed in, in one of the meets that I run in May, mid-May. But now, let, let me ask you this, because I was looking, and I, yeah, I had to do my research. I was looking at some some videos of you, okay, and I saw you benching and deadlifting and, and doing all this all this jazz. Uh, what What is your best deadlift? What's your best weight? Well, and again, if you're talking about at a meet, or as opposed to the gym, because my lifts are always better in the gym. Oh, of course, because when you're at the meet, everything... <laughs> you, you, I'll you're, say my best on the platform, because that's probably what you're asking. Uh, I compete raw now. Actually, no, uh, I, which, I, we can go either either. It doesn't matter, because I know when you're competing, okay. you're, you're adhering to certain rules and regulations and stuff, so it's different than if you're doing it at the gym. So, yeah, either or either. Well, um, I, I did look the same way, whether it's in the gym or not in the gym. But... Um, it, I have done a 440 raw. When all my lifting is done raw, as you know. That's mm -hmm. done with a belt only, or maybe wrist wraps when you're benching, or knee wraps when you're, you're squatting. I don't wear bench shirts, and I don't wear squat suits or deadlifts. That, that's that's an important thing. I'm annoying and cumbersome. Yeah. I have nothing. I have nothing against that type of lifting, mind you. I just mm -hmm. find it annoying and cumbersome for myself. Right. Well, I'm glad you said that because no. now a lot of people use the, the shirts to give them a little boost where you're on the bench, you have the shirt on, you know, usually if you, if you go on your benching three, four, five, whatever it is, you know, this just gives you that extra edge, but you don't do that. No. Mm -hmm. uh, my best deadlift uh, on the platform is a 440. Okay. In the gym, it's a 475. And bench press is a... 280 mm -hmm. on the platform, and I just did a 300 the other night. Uh, so my best is about, I think, 315. Yeah, I saw you do 315. That's some powerlifter style, of course. <laughs> yeah. Not not just first and go, but with a pause. So I'm hoping to work back up to that, and I want to bring that to the platform. I, I have some bad problems with performance anxiety, and uh, I have been to hypnotherapist, and I'm actually going to see somebody within the next couple of weeks about this again because I've been after that 300 for two and a half years now to take it to the platform. I haven't been able to do it. I psych myself up and out. Mm -hmm. So, I, you know, we'll cross our fingers because I did 300 easy as cake the other night in the gym. Yeah. And I should be able to do it on the platform. Uh, I'm sure that you 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 are you have the ability to do on the platform. I think you know what happens, and it's interesting. And I want to talk about that going to hypnotherapist because uh, you know if you're gonna try doing that, I want to hear you get your input on that. Because you know, you look, sometimes you go and if you go compete, whether it be uh, you know bodybuilding, powerlifting, even if you're doing a bikini thing or you're doing whatever you're doing, uh, sometimes you get that anxiety. You know, uh, you know, even even if you're 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 married and you're going home, sometimes you get that anxiety. <laughs> <laughs> I got rid of that anxiety a long time ago. <laughs> yeah, you, yeah, you kick you kick that anxiety to the curb. Hey, goodbye. I'll deal with a more positive anxiety. anxiety. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so that that that's that's you know at least you with that. And look at I stutter, da, 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 da. but at least with that, what you what you're doing is embracing that you and you recognize that you you have there's something wrong that there's something that you have to correct in order for you to to get on the platform and go out and achieve the goals that you that you know you can. You know, um, and, and what's your thoughts on the hypnotherapist thing? Have you you've done research on it? I guess right. Well, I, I've actually been to a hypnotherapist, and um, I, I don't know. Obviously, I, I benched after I've been to the hypnotherapist, and my, my bench press 
didn't really improve. <laughs> but I'm actually, and I can't think of what she terms herself. In the next few weeks, I'll be going to see somebody different. She, if I could tell you what she, what she calls herself, I would, but I can't remember. And that's what she actually specializes in, is performance anxiety. Really? So, um, hoping that, I mean, I'm, at this point, I may not even need it because, you know, you, you progress in many different areas as your life goes on. And I, I think that I'm getting a little bit better in, in that just well, you know, for you, having failed so many times. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I'm sick of it at this point. Yeah. But really you know tired. something? <laughs> maybe you take a, maybe you do the Marsha Brady thing. <laughs> Look at the crowd in their underwear. <laughs> Yeah, there you go. Well, no, this time was when I told everybody, and I'm going to tell tell everybody, I actually do plan on bench pressing. I'm running a meet on November 7th, mm -hmm. and I always jump in my own meet. Right. <laughs> Just to get, I'll say I'm not going to, but I do, but I will do it this time. And I'm telling people, go and tell me that I can't do it. Just mm -hmm. start telling me that, that I stop, that I can't do it, because that will give me a different mindset. Mm -hmm. It'll make me mad. Mm -hmm. And they'll have to prove it to you, <laughs> right. rather than you telling me, "Go, Kate, it's just a number. You can do it. You can do it." <laughs> yeah, you know, that just doesn't work for me. <laughs> you know what? For some people, some people it doesn't. You know, sometimes you need you need that little something to make you fight for it. You know, because you know exactly. It, and the thing, like, look with me. I mean, I used to. I mean, my my best bench was five fifty, and you know, if I tried that today, I would die. You know, but. Uh, you know, but people, you know, you, they see you do something, they say, oh, you can do it, you can do it, you can do it, but the reality is, when you're trying to strive for a goal, especially with powerlifting, and you're pushing yourself, and you know what you're, what you're, what you're able to do in the gym, but when you can't do it when you're on the platform, when you, you can't do it when, when, when you're out there competing, it starts to screw with your head a little bit, and people telling you, yeah, well, you know, you've done it here, you can do it there, yeah, I know that, but it's not working, <laughs> <laughs> it's, not it's not working. Well, that's, you know, that's not exactly what I want to hear either. It's like when in bodybuilding, you go to the gym and, and you're dieting for show, and everybody is going to tell you, you look great. Mm -hmm. You look great. Well, I don't want to hear that. I want to hear falls are, and then I need to work on those. So, you know, I, I try to find people to work with, like my new prep guy that I worked mm -hmm. with this year. And he, he was, he didn't sugarcoat things. I need to work on this. He would tell me. I don't want to hear how great I look. Everybody, everybody wants to tell you that. Right. And then there's people who think they have no flaws because that's what everybody tells them. Mm -hmm. You know. And then reality slaps them right in the face. <laughs> <laughs> I want reality, exactly. Yeah, but that's it, you know, because it's, it's look. If you have someone in your life that tells you, you know, Kate. You're in the gym, uh, you're, you're bodybuilding, so you're competing. Okay, you're doing this. Yeah, you look good, but, you know, your calves can use a little work. Oh, but you can do this. Oh, but you can do that. You know, when you start getting someone of, you know, that, that obviously that knows what they're talking about, telling you the truth. Key word, the truth. That's truth. Yeah, mm -hmm. the, the truth shall set you free. It'll free your mind, and it'll, it'll give you something to reach for. Say, okay, yeah, you know, I have to work on my back. I have to work on my lower back, my shoulders. I have to get this together, get that together. You know, maybe my bench, maybe I adjust this, whatever the case may be. Okay, but if you have somebody that you ha hold in that high regard, giving you that truth, you can't go wrong. No, and, and it. it it allows you to strive for improvement rather than getting a little lax on it. Go, oh, I look good. He says I look good. Everybody says I look good. And, yeah, but you know, then, you're not you're not going to improve that way. No, you can't. And that you know that that is something that happens in bodybuilding today with a lot of top bodybuilders. You know, they go on stage and everybody tells them they look great and this and that. And I'm not mentioning names of anyone. You know, but you have, you have guys, you know, that, that look boxy and stuff like that. You know, they don't have the uh, the Frank Zane uh, type of look, you know, or even when uh, Lee Labrada used to uh, compete and stuff like that. You know, they had, uh, the, symmet my yeah, they had the symmetrical yeah. bodies. You know, even when Rich Gasparri, you know, he competed when he was competing against Lee Haney. You know, he had that look. He was vascular, everything, and he, he looked good, but he didn't get the, the, he didn't get the Olympia, but at the end of the day, and I said this uh, on a show not too long ago. At the end of the day, you know, I know where he is. I don't, I don't know who, you know, Lee Haney won, but where is he now? You know, you know where's he exactly? Yeah. exactly. So winning, winning isn't always everything right. in, in some of the sports, especially bodybuilding. Yeah. It's, it's where you take your yeah, life. It is sub 
objective. Yeah, but you know what? It's not, and, and people say, well, it's not uh, whether you want to lose, it's, it's, it's how you take it as you go along. And it's true because you, you win, you, you win some, you lose some, you go. As long as you're enjoying what you do and you're getting fulfillment out of that and you use it in your life to better yourself as a person, maybe better your business, whatever it may be, then who's better than you? That's it. Yeah. That's it, exactly. So, hey, tell us what's going on with you now um, uh, so the, our listeners can, um, I guess, you know, if you have, you know, some, I know you have some uh, some meets coming up and stuff like that. You know, I want them to be able to, um, I guess, follow you and follow your, your career because yeah, your career is nowhere near um, coming well, Nowhere to, near over. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 no. <laughs> No, no, I was going to say it was nowhere near the midpoint. See, I wasn't saying over. I was saying the midpoint because you, you're going to you're going to achieve a lot. I know you're going to achieve a lot of great things. I mean, you're not done yet. What you're doing right now yeah, is just yeah. now. I mean, it's like you just it's it's like you kind of started and now you're in the middle of it. Now you're going to you're going to go and do great things because I know it's going to stretch it's going to stretch beyond you actually doing the powerlifting, you actually doing the bodybuilding. You're you're going to stretch out in the industry because you. I I really hope to. Um, as far as me right now, my plans to compete. Um, well, I said I was going to bench on November seventh. Now November seventh is one of the meets that I hold, which is called uh, the First State Power Frenzy. Mm-hmm. People don't know what I am from the First State, which is Delaware, and Delaware's a state. I think people are becoming to realize that now that we have a <laughs> vice president who comes from Delaware. You'd be amazed how many people that I've met throughout the country don't know that Delaware is a state. It's sad. <laughs> I, thought, I thought it was a river. But, I thought um, it was a gap. <laughs> <laughs> but the first state power frenzy, uh, November 7th, is the meet I will be running. And uh, I do plan to bench press. And it's possible I could do something else, but most likely just bench press. And um, I'm really excited these days because I'm able to squat again, which I had not been able to do for almost two years because of some uh, leg pain issues. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to go so far as to call it an injury, but uh, with my the help of my godlike chiropractor, um, it, it's been acting the way it should, and I'm able to squat again recently. So, so I don't up. foresee myself squatting until next year because it takes a while to build that back up to where I used to be. But um, that's powerlifting. But where is that? Uh, Where is that? that November 7th in bench and uh, probably a full power meet sometime at the beginning of the year. Mm -hmm. Bodybuilding, I hope to do either the Masters again next summer or perhaps the North American, the MPC North American, one of them, one of them um, for sure next summer. Okay. Um... Well, you know, I'm running the two two powerlifting meets that I do every year, and I'm thinking about uh, doing. I, I'm not even sure if I want to talk about it yet, but uh, I thinking about uh, perhaps there used to be some women's strength extravaganza shows that mm-hmm. used to do pretty well with uh, the, the bodybuilding women from the powerlifting women, and it was all geared towards the women, and it wasn't strict powerlifting. And the rules were a little bit more lax, but it, strength movements, um, uh-huh. and somehow they died, and I'd like to be able to bring one of those back, and, uh, oh, that would be awesome, awesome. Hmm? That, that would be awesome, ESPN, if you're listening, listen to Kate, <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, I think, um, it, it takes somebody, yeah, I, I'm well known in both those worlds now, um, well, at least I hope I am, so I think it takes somebody with, um, who's known, and, and respected mm-hmm. for their strengths to be able to have their name associated with it. Oh. Um, and I'm a woman too, so mm-hmm. that helps. Yeah, but without but a doubt. Again, that, that's just kind of in the, in the, in the thought process. And, uh, there's a couple of other events that, uh, may or may not happen that I'm not ready to talk about this yet, but, uh, I will be competing myself uh, a couple times this year, so. 
Okay, but now I, built, I, I promise you to bring that 300 bench. <laughs> right, so now, now I'm going to hold you to it to now. The platform. But, yeah, now I'm going to hold you to it because I don't. And now, just just so our listeners understand, and, I, and now I'm going to say this, Kate, because now you put yourself in it. Okay, because now, as everyone knows, as of a couple of weeks ago, we're going to be hosting the Ultimate Body uh, radio show, which is associated with the Ultimate Body TV show. So now what's going to happen, Kate, when you have all these bodybuilding fans and powerlifting fans and fitness fans that are tuning in, okay, and all this stuff's happening, they, I'm, I'm going to say, you know, at some point in time, when you do hit that mark, I'm going to say, you know what, Kate did it, and I am going to say that. Because you're 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 striving you're striving to do something which I think is amazing, you know. Uh, to well, go, I can do it. See, that's the point. I can do it. <laughs> yeah, I, I know. No, no. But I'm saying what, what, what's amazing. It's not that you can't do it physically. Is that you? You know, you're going to do something that you have not done on the platform. You've done it. Period. But you haven't done it on a platform for whatever reason, whatever, whatever. Uh, yeah, see, that's you. almost as almost as big as a challenge to me as actually being able to push the weight. Mm -hmm. As actually being able to overcome what has prohibited me mm -hmm. from pushing on the platform. That's just another form of challenge. I should should just look at it that way. Yeah, well, that's it. It's another thing that you're gonna get. You're gonna get through. Look, you went through a lot of stuff. You went through back injuries. You went through. Uh, you know, uh, you went through a divorce. You went through all this stuff, raising raising your, your son, and 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 explain and showing him that hey, you know what? And it's an example you're showing to your kid too. That don't let anyone <laughs> tell. Don't let it. Don't. Let, I would, may I give you a quote? May I give you a quote from my son that is actually kind of funny? Go. <laughs> He's a funny guy, but people ask him all the time, "When are you going to start working out with your mom? And are, are you going to be a bodybuilder like your mom someday, or weightlifter?" And he just point blank one day said, I have absolutely no interest in picking up random heavy bars with big round circles on the end of them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I, so, I, so, I, so I guess he's a thinker, huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, he's pretty smart, yeah. <laughs> yeah but well, let, let him go to Harvard. Let him go wherever he needs to go and get an education. You know, but you, you, but in your life, uh, and I commend you for this, because uh, I know you have things to do today. But I do want to, you know, commend you on on going and reaching for your dreams. And you went through some some a lot of stuff. And I know uh, anyone that goes through things in life and they go and they overcome the hurdles, they don't look back. And you're not looking back. You're looking forward. But it's my honor my privilege on this show to take a step back and look at the journey and that's what we've done because you went through a lot of adversity and you showed you know showed the masses showed people out you know all over the world that you can overcome stuff and go and still achieve your your dreams and your goals but more importantly you showed your son this and showed him that you know you fight the fight, you're gonna to get to where you need to, to get to. Don't let don't let anything stand in your way. Not a person, not uh, any personal adversity, anything that's going on in your life. And I and I pat you on the back for that one. Yeah, I think what you just said is the key: is not to look back, always look forward, because everybody's got adversities and everybody's got their own problems and dramas. Mm -hmm. But uh, you know, the, the hurdles you. you Get over them somehow. If you jump over them, go under them, go around them, yeah. however you need to. Well, it's funny for you. Forward. For you, it's like everything saw you. Your wings started opening up when you when you kick somebody to the curb, and that was <laughs> that was it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know he's gonna get pissed off right now, but that's okay. <laughs> you yep. don't need to talk about that. Uh, no, no, not at all. But no, but you know what? Sometimes you you have to you have to. And I, I said this, I said this a few days ago, uh, if ever you're, you're going through your life and you have any doubt about anyone, you have some heavy doubt about a person or about a business decision or something you're doing, you're, the best thing that you can do is kick it to the curb and move forward because something like that would weigh, will weigh you down in your life and you reaching for your goals. So it's better to, to, to take a walk and say, see ya to business, yeah. personal, whatever it is, and move forward in your life. And basically, that's what you did. And that's why I said it, even though I was joking around about it a little bit, you know, but you, you have to sometimes lay the luggage down and move forward. Right. Yeah, and that, yeah. that's what you've done. You yeah. Kate, uh, just just before we let you go, why don't you uh, let our listeners know how they can follow your uh, 
your career and what you're doing uh, as you, you you strive to to achieve these ama uh, these amazing things. You know, you have a personal website. Yeah, what about the website for the APA? And how can they you know find out about your meets if anyone's interested in getting involved with that? Sure. Um, as far as myself, I do have a website. Um, amazing. It's called katebear.com. Shocking, <laughs> right? -E -A -I -R -D dot com. Um, actually, the website, we're, I'm, I'm talking to somebody now because it's kind of outdated and I, I need to update it. Um, so if you get there with me. It will be updated sometime hopefully before the end of the year, and I'll have a nice, fresh look to it. And new pictures, but it is there right now. I've got tons of pictures on it. I have a training journal on there that you can actually follow. Um, I try to update it at least once a week as to what I'm doing, mm -hmm. and I don't stray too much into my personal life. Most of it, my training, okay. what's going on in the gym, and you know, powerlifting, bodybuilding, things that are going on around me. Mm -hmm. uh, there is an APA website. It's actually apa-wpa.com and you can click on uh, the meets that are coming up, the meet results, world records, uh, American records, all in the APA sanction. Um, my meet is November 7th, Saturday, November 7th at the Training Center Gym in Newcastle, Delaware. Mm -hmm. In case anybody's listening is in the area or wants to come to watch or compete, mm -hmm. It's, uh, I, I, I am well known for having fun meets. I will say that. Like I said, I treat them like parties. I'm there for the lifters. Um, it, it's, I just love it. It's my big party. My babies. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, lifting meet, so I'm looking forward to it. Well, that, that, that's good because you're, you know, you're, you're making it more entertaining. So when people go, they're having, having a good time at the meet while they're doing their thing. Yeah, I, um, I went to a meet a couple of weeks ago, and um, it, it wasn't a bad meet, but there was no music, and, you know, it was kind of a, a, a blah atmosphere. My meets, we play the music, we get everybody amped up, and we have fun. Oh, that's cool. So, that's cool. I think that... Everybody wants to come to a fun meet. <laughs> Come to my meet. <laughs> All right, cool. Well, we're gonna we're gonna mention uh, your meet on the show a couple times as we move forward. Uh, but Kate, I know, as I said, I know you have things to do, and I do want to say this one more time that it was an honor. It was great to have you on the UCW radio show. Uh, I appreciate you taking out the time. And what I'd like to do is have you back on just for a blip, not to go through the whole. Uh, gambit of your life story, but to go for you to come on the show when you break that uh, when you break that barrier and you record when you record that 300 plus bench press. Okay. Right. Hopefully that'll be soon, Lou. Yeah, well, you do it. You do it. You have my number directly, so you call me. You yes, let I me. Do. Yeah, you let me know because we'll bring you back on the show because that is yet another inspirational thing. Because now you broke that barrier, and I want people to to hear about this. So yeah, definitely we want you back on. Well, we'll definitely be expecting that call then. Uh, well, you know what? I I'm hoping for it. And if I don't, if I don't get that call. Well, you know, what, you know what's going to happen. I guess the next time, well, the next time I, I have uh, another uh, bodybuilder, powerlifter on the show, I'm going to say, yeah, you know, that Kate, yeah, she said this, but she didn't do it. You know, she didn't call me. I'm waiting. You know, I'm waiting. I'm waiting. So I expect that call from you. I really do, because I, I, right. I wish okay. you, I wish you, I wish you, I wish you. It is a deal. All right. Excellent. I wish you the best of luck with that, Kate. And uh, again, you know, uh, we're going to mention your your event in November uh, on the show again. And uh, good luck with that. And when you do break that record, we want you back here to talk about it. Okay, it is a deal. Awesome. Thank you, Kate. You enjoy your day. Well, it's been an honor. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> What is your major malfunction? All let it be written. So let it be done. Ladies and gentlemen, my mother thanks you, my father thanks you, my sister thanks you, and I thank you.